Hello dear students welcome to the GDC classes in English so today we are going to discuss another important topic from the physical pharmacy that is the surface tension and the interfacial phenomena so all right students so before going into the chapter we must know few basics about what is the surface tension what is the interfacial phenomena how both of these are different from each other what are the methods that are used for the determination of these surface tension and the interfacial tension so students uh, let's start with our first topic another thing thing is that this topic is very important from your exam point of view a lot of basic questions are asked from this topic only so we'll be discussing the questions later on so firstly we'll start with the basic topics that will be covered in this so explaining starting with the first part that is what exactly is the surface tension students all right so let's first begin that what exactly is the surface tension okay so students you must know that surface tension is nothing but the force of attraction it is nothing but the force of attraction that exists that exists between the molecules between the molecules in liquids and solids so let us explain it with an example also you might have seen this example a lot of time or you have seen it in your books also i'll just quickly make the diagram this is the interface part here is the liquid phase and the gas phase okay this is the interface this is the molecule present at the interface while this is the molecule that goes into the bulk part okay students all right so now let's explain it with the basic thing that what happens when a molecule is in the bulk so what happens in the bulk students in bulk the molecules are subjected i am writing the same here in bulk the molecules are subjected to equal attractive forces to equal attraction in all directions now this equal forces of direction uh, forces of attractions in all directions tend to cancel out each other okay these forces tend to cancel out each other so that the net force that net attractive force experienced by the molecule in the bulk is nearly zero okay students so these forces tend to cancel out each other and the net force experience net force of what net force of attraction that is being experienced by the molecule in the bulk is zero okay students well understood so the molecules what will happen the molecule will start experiencing an inward pull so the molecule will start experiencing an inward pull right so this this indicates that the molecule at the surface or the interface have more energy as compared to the molecules that exist in the bulk which is why it creates an inward pull that is that has to get counterbalanced okay so this force that is applied is counterbalanced by this inward pull okay students so hereby we are just discussing i'll just simplify it for you surface tension is nothing but it is the force of attraction that exists between the molecules okay so sometimes the molecule that is present at the interface as shown here or sometimes it is present in the bulk so the molecule that is in the bulk experiences a different force of attraction from all the directions which tends to cancel out each other and the net force of attraction tends to be zero okay students so the molecule what will happen 
the molecule will start experiencing an inward force or the inward pull right why this happens this happens because the molecules that are present at the interface this happens because the molecules that are present at the interface are or bear higher energies as compared to the molecules in bulk which is why this force inward pull is created okay students so now the force applied to counterbalance this inward pull is actually known as the surface tension again i am repeating the force required to counterbalance this force this inward pull is termed as surface tension okay so surface tension is nothing but force per unit length okay students you have to remember this formula surface tension is the force per unit length what will be the unit of surface tension the unit of force is newton and the unit of length is meter so newton per meter is the unit of surface tension i hope it is clear that surface tension is actually a force that is required to counterbalance the inward force experienced by the molecules present at the interface okay students so now before moving any further you should know that surface tension actually indicates the strength of cohesive forces okay students so before that we must know what are these cohesive forces and what are these adhesive forces i am just creating a section here for you all to understand surface tension actually creates a in strength actually indicates the strength of the cohesive forces okay and the another term is the adhesive forces students you must know that cohesive forces are the force of attraction cohesive forces are the force of attraction between the like molecules while on the other hand the adhesive forces are the force of attraction between the unlike molecules we will be counteracting with a lot of examples ahead that will indicate where these cohesive forces come in play where these adhesive forces come in play you will see a lot of examples in the coming slides okay i hope this two terms are clear to you one is the cohesive forces and other is the adhesive forces in the cohesive forces the force of attraction actually exists between the like molecules while in the adhesive forces the force of attraction exists between the unlike molecules okay students the questions can be asked very directly what is what is the formula how the surface tension is represented what are the units what is the basic difference between the cohesive or adhesive forces and what does the surface tension indicate please mark it that surface tension indicates the strength of cohesive forces surface tension as mentioned by st indicates the strength of cohesive forces i hope this is clear to you all okay so now let's move to our another topic that is the interfacial tension now we just have seen what is the surface tension now, now the other term is the interfacial tension okay so surface tension and interfacial tension are quite similar but quite dissimilar terms also it is very contradictory that these terms exist all well together but interfacial tension is actually uh, exists when the phases 
exist together what phases exist together you must understand you must know when uh, this is actually between the two immiscible liquids okay so the boundary between the two is known as the interface so the boundary between the two immiscible surface is actually known as the interface okay so what is the interfacial tension the interfacial tension is the force per unit length which is acting at the interface only i have just mentioned what is the interface here it is nothing but the actually phase difference between the two immiscible liquids so the interfacial tension is the force it can be defined as the force per unit length acting at the interface okay what is the other major difference we have talked that the surface tension actually indicates the strength of the cohesive forces cohesive forces were the force of attraction between the like molecules but in this case in case of interfacial tension there is the there indicates the strength of the adhesive forces which is the force of attraction between the unlike molecules this interfacial tension here i am writing interfacial tension indicates the strength of adhesive forces okay students we have just seen that adhesive forces are the force of attraction between the unlike molecules but the cohesive forces are the force of attraction between the like molecules which is indicated by the surface tension and this is indicated by the interfacial tension okay students now another major point to note here is that interfacial tension another major point to note here is that the interfacial tension is always considered less than the surface tension this question has been asked a lot many times in your exam gpat exam please mark it as very 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 important the surface tension is more than the interfacial tension the interfacial tension as i have mentioned indicates the strength of the adhesive forces while the surface tension indicates the strength of the cohesive forces okay students so next comes is how these surface tension and interfacial tensions are measured how these surface tensions and interfacial tensions are measured just a second yeah there are a lot of methods to measure the surface tension and the interfacial tension we are going to explain a bit little bit about the what are the methods how the surface tension and interfacial tension is measured so methods for the determination of surface tension and the interfacial tension first method that i am going to talk about is the capillary rise method first method is the capillary rise method first important point to note down is that this method is not suitable for the interfacial tension this method is not suitable for the determination of interfacial tension but it is actually very important for the determination of surface tension only okay so what happens in the capillary rise method students you must note that if the what happens in this is that if the capillary tube is immersed into a liquid the provided angle of contact very important term the provided angle of contact that liquid 
makes with the capillary tube is less than 90 degree students when we are going to move ahead we will see how this contact angle is actually based on the spreading of the liquid droplet on the solid surface and for the uh, contact angle for the wettability to occur the, the contact angle must be less than 90 degrees okay so if the capillary tube is immersed into the liquid the provided angle of contact that liquid makes with the capillary tube should be less than the 90 degree what will happen after that only if there the angle is less than 90 degrees the liquid will rise into the capillary tube the liquid will tend to rise into the capillary tube okay students i can show you with the diagram like this yes so this one is the capillary rise method in this you can see the capillary is dipped immersed into the liquid which actually provide uh, and the liquid keeps on rising into the capillary up to a height edge now this occurs because the adhesion force between the water molecules adhesive forces between the water molecules and the capillary wall is greater than the cohesive forces between the water molecules students you must know this is a very important point that this liquid will continue to rise the upward movement of the liquid will continue to take place due to the surface tension that is being balanced by the downward force of the gravity okay students which is due to the weight of the liquids so as i have mentioned you can see there is the liquid that is rising into the capillary tube and the contact angle here mentioned is the theta the liquid that is rising in the capillary tube up to a height h now this liquid will continue to rise into the capillary tube and only if when the contact angle is less than the 90 degrees the liquid then will rise into the capillary tube up to a certain height that is being mentioned h because the adhesive forces between the liquid and the uh, capillary wall have been found to be greater than the cohesive forces between the water molecules okay students and the, this will continue to rise in the capillary till the upward movement the surface tension is being balanced by the weight of the liquid which is the uh, gravity this is the mg okay force of the gravity so this is the first method for the determination of surface tension okay students now second method is the wilmy plate method I'm just giving you very brief about it I will tell you what are the questions that can be asked from this topic will me plate method yet another important method for the determination of surface tension okay the one point that has to be noted in the previous section is that capillarized method is not suitable for the determination of interfacial tension but can only be used for the determination for the surface tension okay students so in wilmy plate method what happens i'll just uh, make a diagram over here i'll explain all these things again also with the uh, suitable diagrams just a second yeah in wilmy plate method what happens is i'll just quickly make a diagram here you can see the plate is being immersed into the liquid solution okay and there is one plate 
this is also another plate which is actually a balance that is attached to this plate the plate is being immersed into the liquid medium and here are the weights the balance here right so the liquid container is lowered you can see the liquid container this strip this plate will be lowered into the liquid solution and the reading on the balance will be noted prior to its actual detachment very important students now here what will happen the liquid will uh, the plate will be lowered into the liquid until the point of detachment is observed okay the balance here uh, actually weighs the uh, uh, how much is the detach weight enough required for the detachment to occur this yet again is the method for the determination of surface tension there are other methods also you must note the at least their uh, names is the ring detachment method which is very similar to the wilmy plate method ring detachment method other one is the drop weight and drop number method drop number and drop weight method direct questions are asked generally that which method is used suitable for the determination of the surface tension or the interfacial tension so let's summarize what we have seen till now firstly i had mentioned about the surface tension you can see here in the diagram very interestingly that yes there is a molecule at the surface at the interface and the other molecules in the bulk which experiences the pull from all direction the force of attraction from the all direction which is the cancel out from each other right and there is this interface due to which the molecules are pulled inwards so to counterbalance this force counterbalance this inward pull the force that is required is the surface tension which is nothing but the force per unit length acting at the surface basically at the right angles so the unit here as i've mentioned the formula is the force per unit length the unit force force was newton for the length it was meter so the unit comes out to be newton meter or in cj system it's the dyne per centimeter very important direct questions can be asked another major point that i have mentioned that surface tension indicates the strength of the cohesive forces while the interfacial tension has been found to indicate the strength of adhesive forces the cohesive forces are the forces between the like molecules while the adhesive forces are the force actually between the unlike molecules okay students yeah interfacial tension indicates the force per unit length acting at the interface which actually exists between the two immiscible liquids that i have mentioned okay students now this has been found to indicate the strength of the adhesive forces which are the forces between the unlike molecules yes so all right now the next important topic that we are going to cover today from your exam point of view is the spreading coefficient students as the name suggests spreading coefficient which means that there is certain drop of liquid that is going to spread above the surface okay so here to understand the spreading coefficient we must first know that spreading coefficient is the difference between the work the adhesive for work done by the adhesive forces to the work done by the cohesive forces as we have mentioned the adhesive forces is the force of attraction between the unlike molecules while in case of the cohesive forces it is the work done by the like molecules so first of all it is very important topic from your exam point of view okay another thing is that it is the difference between the work of adhesion and the work of cohesion okay so let us understand with it with a simple method suppose this is a water surface here it is the water surface and here is a drop of oilic acid here the medium is air and this is the water basic classic example 
of explaining how this surface tension actually works so surface tension as mentioned is the difference between the work of adhesion and the work of cohesion so the oily acid when the oily acid drop is put on the water surface it spreads as a film you can see when the oilic acid is put on the water surface the uh, oilic acid will spread as a film right so if the force of adhesion between the oilic acid and the water molecules is more than the cohesive forces between the oilic acid molecules only then the oilic acid will spread on the surface of water as now i am mentioning it again that you we i'll explain it with a very simple example the oilic acid will spread on the surface of water only when the force of adhesion will be a force of adhesion between the oilic acid and the water molecule is more than the uh, for of course forces between the oilic acid molecules okay students so now here also the surface tension comes into the action we must understand here at what points the molecules are experiencing the surface tension so firstly there is the surface tension represent presented as gamma l for the oilic acid this is the surface tension ex experienced by the oilic acid because uh, it is in contact with the water as well as at uh, in contact with the air also so it is represented as gamma l similarly for the water which is in direct contact with the air also the surface tension is mentioned as gamma s okay students so here is the interface that exists between both of these the surface tension at the interface is represented as gamma ls okay students so now we have to find out where is the adhesive forces and where acts the cohesive forces so okay students for understanding this we will assume this oily acid drop in the form of a cylinder with the area 1 cm square okay this oilic acid drop is considered in the form of cylinder the oilic acid drop acts as a cylinder where here two phases are there the one is the oilic acid phase the other is the water phase so if we separate both of these if we separate both of these phases into the oilic acid phase and into the water phase what are the surface tension that are experienced at the oilic acid the surface tension experience is the gamma l where at the water surface it is the gamma s and here as mentioned at the interface it is the gamma l s okay students so what is the work of adhesion here it is the um, surface tension of the oilic acid with the surface plus the surface tension of water minus the surface tension of the interface this is the adhesive forces right work done by the adhesive forces now for calculating the part of the cohesive forces we should another way assume for the cohesive forces we know the force of attraction exists between the like molecules okay students so here we will consider just another cylinder of the uh, drop of the oilic acid with just one phase that is the oilic acid now when it is separated into the two different phases the uh, obviously the material the liquid is the same we have to mention that this of extension will be gamma l in all the cases so the total work of cohesion will be what it will be 2 gamma l generally the work is actually the surface tension multiplied the area here we at both the cases we have mentioned the area is nothing but 1 cm square so we are just putting the surface tensions here okay students we got the work of adhesion 
we got the work of cohesion now we have to calculate the spreading coefficient the spreading coefficient is the work of adhesion minus the work of cohesion so simplifying it the uh, equations that is the first equation was the work of adhesion the second equation here is mentioned is the work of cohesion so by from the first equation we can see the work of adhesion is gamma l plus gamma s minus gamma ls okay students minus the work of cohesion is the gamma l so simplifying it we get the spreading coefficient being valued at what the uh, value of the spreading coefficient is the gamma l gamma l plus gamma s minus gamma ls minus 2 gamma l so these two goes out and the remaining is what gamma s minus gamma l minus gamma ls okay students i have yes i have written it correctly so now this is the equation for your spreading coefficient okay students we can further simplifying it by putting it as this gamma l plus gamma l s i'll write it on the next part again i'll write it here only so that you all can see easily yes i have mentioned that so spreading coefficient is the work of adhesion minus the work of cohesion right so the work of adhesion was gamma l plus gamma s minus gamma ls and the work of cohesion was 2 gamma l now with the simplifying this equation we get gamma s minus gamma l minus gamma ls Further simplifying it, we get the gamma S minus, we'll take it as out as plus gamma Ls. This is the equation for the spreading coefficient. Okay, students. So now for the spreading to occur, if this value of spreading coefficient turns out to be positive, then only the spreading will occur. Then only the spreading will occur. Okay then if the spreading coefficient turns out to be negative then the spreading will not occur the spreading will not occur so students this is a very very important topic from your exam point of view i must say i myself have seen a lot lots of questions on this topic only so you better prepare it for your exam point you have to understand how the uh, work of cohesion works you have to understand how the work of adhesion works you have to find out the spreading coefficient if the value turns out to be positive the spreading will occur if the value turns out to be negative the spreading will not occur right students next topic is the wetting angle and the contact angle yet another important topic just hold on